Live now. All right, guys, welcome to the live stream and welcome to uh, the uh, after live stream of Economic Guide 3.0. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, just waiting for some people to get in as people start to get notified that I am live streaming right now. Uh, so everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you all for waiting for this long-awaited economic guide. I know it took me way longer than usual to make the guide, uh, but today we're going to be playing some Power and Revolution and at the same time answering any questions that everyone has uh, about, the econ about the economy, about anything that we missed, because uh, there were a couple of things that we were not able to put into the economic guide. Uh, so we will be discussing that. Uh, today, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a game started. We're gonna be, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deal with COVID as we uh, play through this today. So I'm gonna go ahead and play. What are we gonna be playing today? Uh, I guess I could go as France. Play as New Zealand. Uh, ooh, New Zealand, maybe. Yeah, we can do New Zealand. Never played New Zealand. Well, anyway, guys, let's answer all of your questions regarding the game. And I already made some notes. Uh, uh, when I was editing and also while I was watching the live stream with you guys. So, uh, a few things I'm going to already uh, mention. Uh, Gabe, where the hell did you come from? Um, I was here all the time. Uh, uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but if you really need to know, Brazil. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh... Anyway... Uh, no, uh, Gabe's someone been mentioned around. cutting. Gabe's been around for. Uh, I mean, he's been around since almost the inception of this channel because uh, he was around when uh, the forums were around. And uh, I mean, me and Gabe more so met on the forums, and that's exactly where uh, where he came from, I guess. Um, if you if you're new to this channel or just newer, you know, if you subscribe to me, maybe 2019 or 2020, maybe even 2018. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably why you don't know about that. But if you've been here since maybe 2016, 2017, you'll probably definitely remember. Yeah, and also I was out of YouTube for a while because, well, it wasn't getting satisfying for me. And also it was busy with college because last year was my last year of college fun times but now i'm officially a business administration graduate with a bachelor degree now nice. let's begin I'm... all right first question what sort of power plants do you suggest nuclear power plants create a lot of power but sometimes i need to build so many that the world doesn't have enough uranium to fuel all of them oh my well well, Carl Ramirez made this question, and yeah, nuclear power plants create a lot of power, and they are very good. I suggest you to use the third gen to research the third generation nuclear power plant because it generates more energy and it's more efficient. And also, uh, while nuclear power plants they generate a lot of a lot of uh, money a lot, as well as a lot of energy, I do believe that you should give wind power a, a shot. Because they, it is cheap, and you can create a lot of them. So if your country doesn't have enough money, or enough um, enough money, or even enough land to uh, to put, uh, actually, if you don't have enough land, uh, anyway, <laughs> if you don't have enough money, it's a good uh, it's a good trade. And if you're uh, if you have access to the sea, it's even better to have uh, wind power because offshore wind farms uh, have far more give far more energy. Yeah, see, I need so yeah, to... you, you do give uh, solar power, wind power, and geothermal power a try. Uh, geothermal, you don't need to actually build them on a map, so uh, and they are considered considered uh, renewable energy. So you can always uh, try out geothermal. Yeah, it looks like uh, hydroelectricity actually um, produces about uh, half a terawatt more 
uh, than geothermal. I'm looking at about 10 facilities for each, and uh, geothermal produces 2.5 terawatts, while hydroelectricity actually uh, produces about 3 terawatts. Um, what I really yeah, need to do, if there's anything that I need to do, I really, I should really, uh, look into revising and then making a brand new energy tutorial because, I mean, energy is still important in this game. So, I mean, I could consider uh, going back and especially made after a... the 2019 edition. My God, is it important? Oh my God, yeah. And I, and I mean, I think my uh, original e energy tutorial, um, that that one's way outdated so i definitely yeah i could definitely make a energy tutorial 2.0 um if you have a lot of MP yeah and so what if you want to have a clean energy grid you need to avoid both fossil fuel energy and biomass because biomass um it's not exactly green energy it's actually like incinerators so biomass uses trash and uses wood to yeah, make I definitely, energy Biomass is the one that I really uh, would not suggest uh, using, especially if you're really wanting to fight climate change. Biomass is just not. It's not. Uh, because if you actually if you actually have the... Let me look. Let's go over to Global Threats. And if I actually show it right here, we can go to... Let me look at deforestation. Deforestation... Um, okay, it's not affected by deforestation, but what it is affected by is let's global warming so if we go to global warming the 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 uh, global threats indicator it shows you about your information about global warming and everything so you actually have these three options on the left so if you actually click distribution of co2 emissions it will tell you exactly where your co2 emissions are coming from and this is actually across the entire world but if you actually look Forest, the forestry sector is actually 24% of global CO2 emissions in power and revolution. But, and if I keep looking, <clears throat> uh, other energy sectors, so energy sectors that are affected by it is biomass. And then, where was it? I, th I thought it like directly said biomass, but I guess I was wrong on that. Uh, fossil fuels 25%, but it looks like um, I, I, I would try to, I would probably assume that it's a connected to not just the forestry sector, but it's also connected to the biomass sector because they're also using wood. Anyway, next question. This one is from Jadens Starks. What is the best thing to fight poverty, income inequality, and to increase? purchasing power well i'm gonna leave this to for pg to answer first what do you usually do um in my gameplays i don't usually uh do I, it's funny i don't i kind of don't uh fight necessarily uh income inequality because i play as more of a conservative whenever i do play some gameplays um but if you're wanting to fight and and i've actually been playing a couple of liberal gameplays, especially as the United States with Joe Biden, um, or whatever the <laughs> power and revolution name is for him, uh, one of your best ways you're going to be able to fight income inequality is going to be, for one, raising the high income tax bracket. That's going to be uh, one of the uh, most direct ways, which gets a lot of support, especially from your left-wing parties if you're a left-wing state. Um, the inheritance tax, increasing your inheritance tax, the tax on the large fortunes is a, is another good way to fight income inequality. Um, if we go over to creation, let me look over here. Um, I don't... What else was there? Um, those are like some of the biggest ones that can fight income inequality. But uh, Gabe, whichever, whichever ones, what am I forgetting? Well, there's the wealth tax, inheritance tax, and the income tax. Those are the top three taxes for to combat uh, income inequality. But anyway, uh, what I do for income inequality is that there are several things that actually affect income inequality far more than most social policies. And one of them is education. Uh, you have to have your educations, educational system very well funded so that people have 
can actually leave high school with a good job. Uh, I also usually uh, this is supported from from me, but if you want to have uh, a gameplay and you want to increase your minimum wage, but you don't want to increase it too much, what you should do is that you can uh, incre uh, increase your minimum wage as well as public wages uh, based on the inflation of the previous year. So what I do is that I make a small calculation of the inflation inflation of the previous year, and I add to that uh, about half of the growth. So every year, uh, the minimum wage is increased by the, the growth of the inflation and a bit of the growth of the economy. And so, it, and it looks yeah, like this the, will uh, help. It looks like on uh, Power and Revolution, the... A social inequality uh, meter. Uh, so there's three, two different causes for social inequality and power and revolution. It says that unemployment is one of them, but then it, sa it says that COVID-19 uh, is another cause, I guess, if you're playing with COVID. So that's going to increase uh, social inequality oh, absolutely. As, as it starts getting worse. Because, I mean, I guess that's what you could definitely say. Um, is going on right now with the transfer of wealth that's been happening over the past uh, about year since COVID ever even started in the in uh, the world. Um, world hunger seems to be a what is it? Let me go back. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Uh, someone mentioned. Uh, Jadens also mentioned uh, uh, capping the rents and a high rent allowance. Well, yeah, that gives a lot of popularity, but I don't do. Uh, I don't cap the rents because, well, that policy, the, the, the rent policy in this game only really affects the inflation rate and the growth of inflation. Because one of the things that actually uh, are calculated into inflation is the cost of housing. So what I usually do is that I don't go too far as to rent, cap the rents, but I do uh, get some level of control in there. Or else, even with like 2% growth, you're going to have an inflation growth that is just out there. And, oh, my poverty rate stays at 10%. Well, I believe that's more of a mechanic of the game. Sometimes you're going to hit a plateau and, uh, or a floor and you won't get any, past, any, any way past it. Well, let's go for the next question. I don't get minimum wage. If I have it at a thousand dollars, would that be ten dollars an hour? Uh, well, you're gonna have to calculate the hourly rate yourself. You, so what you do is that you go to the work tab, you check the uh, PG. Please open work, the work tab right now because I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I was I had to mute my mic real quick, but I am looking at it right now. But yeah, you go to the work tab, and you go f to your working hours. And, and what you do is that you calculate uh, the monthly wage based on the average working hour per week. It's a very quick calculation. You, uh, you get the number of weeks, you divide the minimum wage by that number of weeks, and then you divide again by the number of hours, and then that gives you the month, the average daily wages. Hmm. Actually, that's know, what I I'm do. still learning stuff from you. Yeah, that's what I do. See, if you actually oh, here. the thing about yeah, this game, the thing that the thing about this game that I honestly really like is that I mean, there is a lot of I guess math calculations that you can consider putting into this game. And if you actually do it, and it ends up paying off as an actually good economic policy that will, you know, provide dividends the next couple of years down the line as you play through the game. So it's it's really cool how you can kind of implement things like that and do the math calculations and it still pays off. Oh, I do. I must inform. I do. Uh, this is a simulation game through and through, so you're, you're gonna have to know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. Or else you're gonna end up like a 
you you end up in the Discord asking, guys, why is my, is my inflation rate so high? <laughs> uh, what did you do? Oh, you see, uh, I'm playing as uh, Team Buck Stan or some country, and I decided to make a $1 trillion contract for all of my nation's oil. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> yeah, and see, that's that's what really gets me about it is is how pe some people and and I mean I mean it makes sense that that's what you would want to do, but then if you're if you're not taking into consideration that I mean it kind of if you it's like putting a couple of blocks together and then seeing exactly what it was. I mean you could you could see that the amount of growth that your country is getting is directly related to how big that economic contract that you just signed was and then pe and then you're just like well why the hell am i why is why the hell is my growth going out of control and why is my inflation going up oh it's because it, the growth tab is literally directly connected to your inflation and then you're signing contracts that are like double the size of your entire gdp so it's like it's right in front of you you're just not looking <laughs> and I, mean, I mean it's it's i mean at the same time at the same time the the, the developers and everyone that do put their uh, time and effort into this game they're not really explaining that it's actually just like it, i guess it's i guess i don't know if that's their plan that they don't want to explain that and then just have everyone else figure it out or something because i mean i guess that's also their plan is that they use this as a simulation game like even for nato for example i mean they have like a nato simulation summits where they use power and revolution uh or yeah. uh, masters of the world i think it was uh to, to kind of like simulate a situation so um it's i guess on one hand i understand that they're uh, they're marketing it as like you know you figure it out you're the leader of the state so yeah and that's exactly what I, what I was going to say that's exactly what I, was, what I was going to say this is a grown up game this isn't like uh, I don't know how to fire maybe this is a game that it's pretty much you're the adult here we're not going to hand hold you at all <laughs> if yeah, you think you're, 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 you're hot shit enough to be president of the US <laughs> Then you're, we're not going to hand hold you, hand hold you here. You, Everything. You, you're, this is a mess that you're in now. But anyway, next question from Carl Ramirez. How can I win the war on terror? Terrorist groups just keep popping up in Afghanistan, Yemen, and Syria. I don't usually, usually go on uh, much intervention on the Middle East. But what you should do is that you should focus your your secret services tab on going and dismantling these groups. And also, you're going to have to start uh, helping these countries economically with trade contracts, um, giving aid to them, and etc. And if the situation gets too desperate, you can always intervene. But you, you have to remember that intervening means that you uh it's uh god what's what's the word again it's uh well it's a great effort it's gonna take a strain on your popularity as well as on your economy and you will lose soldiers there's absolutely no way that you can do a clean intervention i mean i lost an aircraft carrier to a pickup truck once <laughs> on my uk gameplay so I remember yeah that. <laughs> Oh my god, I was so pissed. Oh my god. I almost I, canceled the series right there. I remember watching that and I'm like, what? Did you just lose an aircraft carrier? <laughs> um I mean I mean it was a good intervention. Usually I'd never I've never I mean in the time that I've I was played doing well, okay. I've never stepped <laughs> I've never gotten involved in Libya just because I remember you losing a carrier. <laughs> Yeah, and I never did anything else with it again. But yeah, I actually had a plan for it because my plan was to just keep uh, bombarding any terrorist groups from the shore and then send an intervention force through to Tobruk and spread them out. But after losing that aircraft carrier, it just wasn't possible anymore. Public opinion would, would just tanked. 
But yeah, you, sh you, you must be really careful because the mil military simulation of this game is brutal. Um, Rulers of Nations. Everyone's talking about Rulers of Nations right now. Um, I've actually never played Rulers of Nations before. Like, yeah, I'm my not... first one was Masters of the World. Me... Boom, 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 boom. Trying to find... Oh, it's in my healthcare tab. I was like, I remember that. I just remembered that anyway, COVID is happening. Yeah, and talking about healthcare, uh, someone on the economic tutorial uh, comments said, uh, "Oh, uh, but I cut the top four stars, and I just found the cheaper stuff with the cut money." Uh, yeah, that will do for the unrest, but you'll still cripple your economy. <laughs> I mean. Uh, and people were acting like hot shits on the, on the comments on the chat, like, oh yeah, but I actually just use do this and it actually works. Um, no, it doesn't. You, you you just postpone the problem. Like just in real life, if you just cut people's healthcare, uh, they are gonna have problems when they actually get sick. And that actually that actually um, has. Uh, and an effect on poverty. So, answer, answering uh, Jaden's as before, you're gonna have to invest a lot on your healthcare if you want to mitigate poverty as well. Yeah, that's that's one of the biggest things is that if you if you're not improving your healthcare metrics over the over the next couple of years as you're playing in the beginning of the game, uh, that's very likely the reason why poverty stays uh, just kind of hovering around whatever it is. From the beginning of the game, because you're not, um, because yeah, you're not improving what's going, you're not improving your overall metrics, and sure, healthcare is definitely directly no related route. to that. Faced with this, all right. Uh, Connor Taylor just asked, if I declare a war in Salmon, it automatically sends all my troops to that location, even if I do not give the generals control. Why is this? Well, uh, the game. Uh, just does this automatically and i don't i'm not sh i i used to have a way to control this but i don't remember anymore because uh i very very rarely actually do any kind of inter military intervention but yeah uh it's from uh, pg i believe that you're better fit to answer this for which because one? Yeah, I'm um, repeating. Uh, Connor Taylor asked, if I declare war in someone, it automatically sends all my troops to that location, even if I did not give the general control. Why is this? Um, the reason for that is, is uh, I think it's, for one thing, it's also it's your secretary of defense, that or your minister of defense, depending on what country you're from. Uh, it's your it's your secretary or uh, minister of defense basically taking control of some of your units, and they also also ask you a question um, whenever a conflict starts, saying like uh, like we I can start ordering troop movements, uh, this and that. If you're pl if you're hitting accept on that, then that's the reason why the troops are moving without you giving them orders. Um, another reason why that happens is because. Um, I think it's just the AI just kind of like noticing that you're at war, so it's just taking uh, actions by itself. So that way, if if you're if you kind of if you kind of like playing and then forget that you're at war, then you'll have troops that are basically being deployed out there that will take action instead of you just having to do that. So um, I don't think there's a way to disable that, but. Um, the, I think the thing about that is, it's just kind of like, it's, I guess it's a kind of a safety net just in case, you know, you forget that you're at war and then you won't be surprised whenever there's like a horde of Iranian boats that are like coming up on the coast of Florida or something like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, PG is a anyway, warhawk, uh... possibly. I am a Warhawk. All right, some of the pro tips that did not go in, but I believe that it's good for me to uh, talk about them. Uh, one of them was about starting new industries. Now, um, 
For some industries that are not capital intensive, you can actually just start them by giving them one a uh, hundred million dollars, closing the tab, open it again, and then you just remove the subsidies to zero, leaving the sector to grow naturally. So instead of having like uh, an X amount of money given to that sector for it to grow, uh, you can just start up the the industry and it will grow itself. Uh, you just grow on its own. So if you're looking, if, if you're on a budget crunch and you want to start new industries, or if you just want to go for a more pro market and less interventionist approach, and but you still need to start an industry like electric vehicles or and, and such, you can just do this. But if the industry is capital intensive, it's not really going to work. Capital intensive is that uh, if you're having them depend on like government subsidies, or what do you mean by capital intensive? No, capital intensive means uh, industries that need a very, very large uh, starting capital to begin. For example, steel. Steel is a capital intensive industry because, well, think of everything that you need to start a steel foundry. It's not a cheap endeavor. Yeah, and that's what I've considered whenever I give out subsidies. I always think about it as in, like, uh, like if, if, if I was in that industry, how much money would I think would I need uh, just to kind of, like, distribute out throughout the, throughout the economy and throughout, like, that specific sector? I know that, um, like, vehicle indus the vehicle industry, the automobile construction industry... Um, I usually give that one at least several billion dollars because I know it's not going to be cheap. And I want to improve that sector as much as I can, so that's why I give... Like, if I'm playing as the United States, I end up giving the, uh, the vehicle industry maybe like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 billion dollars. And it pays off over the next couple of years, and my GDP for my t for my secondary sector uh, that goes shoots up. I mean, I have a game right now playing as the United States with Joe Biden, and my secondary sector GDP uh, that is what is it? I mean, it goes. I mean, I showed it on the economic guide where it goes from like five trillion to like eight trillion. So it it, it, wow. it helps. It really helps, especially if you're yeah, giving them like does. tens of billions of dollars. And, and by the way, uh, automobile industry uh, is uh, a long tail industry because it's one of those industries that need other industries to to start up. And it, and since it needs other industries to start up, you're actually going to that money that you give to that industry in particular is going to spread out to the rest of the economy. So building and housing, automobile construction, uh, chemical industry, uh, those three are long tail industries and they can actually, uh, and if you subsidize them, they are going to increase the rest of your economy with them because they pretty much need all of the other stuff like oil, steel, iron, coal, uh, they need people to run those industries. So if you're having a real, really big uh, unemployment problem or, uh, or, a, or you just really need to increase your GDP, well, that's a very good way to do it. Another question from Jaden Starks. If I have my sectors nationalized and subsidized and exonerate them, the production doesn't go up. Is this a glitch? Well, when you nationalize a sector, you are already controlling it. So subsidizing it to increase production when you can just do it yourself. Um, and about exoneration, you're, it's not going to work because a nationalized sector, you're paying money to yourself. And if you're exonerated, how does it work? You just stop paying yourself money? The decree takes it. Is that, does, does that count as money laundering? Or is it, does power and revolution encourage yeah, money laundering? Gonna... 
how it's gonna how it's gonna work because you have you have to understand that. Uh, but yeah, uh, subsidizing to get much so much rules I can understand. But when you're doing a nationalized uh, a nationalized sector, you're gonna have to control it directly. So, for example, um, I need to get more people on the postal service. Just go ahead and increase the number of people and raise the wages so that you encourage people to go there. And next question by Cole Ramirez. What does the railway construction sector do? I thought you needed building housing on railway construction, not road, railway construction, to build the HSR on the Hyperloop. Well, the parts come from somewhere, you know? It's more, um, in, in some ways, let me, let me go ahead and look at the economic sectors in, uh, uh, since I'm on here. So, in some ways, I feel like it's more of a, um, kind of, kind of just a There's way, no just, just the way so you can interact with it. So, I mean, I think we discussed in the economic tutorial that if... No, 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 no. There's actually... There's actually uh, it, it actually is pegged to an indicator. A very hidden indicator in the transport industry. There's a railway... Uh, left of railways or something on the drop-down menu. Let me look. And if you check it... Uh, yeah, I do believe that it is tied to that, but I'm not sure. I would have now, to test that. I would have to test that. Yeah, but I do believe that railway construction is tied uh, to urban transport on the services tab. And it, it is actually also tied to the railway transportation on the services tab. So, yeah, you're going to have to look, at, uh, look for it. And then, I mean, it's, so it, it's it, not it, just for the construction that you make on the map. It's actually for the construction that the market does itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I think that does make sense because I mean, it's the railway construction and then there's literally a different metric under transportation and that one is, uh, going up without me. I mean, I'm in March of 2020 right now and, uh, and that, and it looks like it's going up and I have a surplus $17 million surplus in the trade balance for railway construction. So, um, I mean, that, that would make sense. Yeah. Another question by Jadens. Why do my consumer motor and other associations keep rioting, even if I do things to help them and increase funding? Well, uh, like AMN said here, union leaders will riot if they dislike you or you do things that they dislike. But I believe that the problem that Jadens has is probably a bug. Because let me let me tell you why. If you have 100% um, popularity for too long, uh, there's a, a bug in the game that suddenly people will start to hate you for no reason. And it's because the game is too processing the stuff that you're doing, but since your popularity is at 100% and it does not go down, um, I don't know, there's a, a conflict, and that conflict uh, possibly puts your... Your relations on the negative or any other kind of weird bug that can happen in the internals of the system. I'm not sure because I never, I don't look at the code, but it's probably that. I mean, I have some general idea of how uh, a game works behind the scenes, and it's probably because of that. Um... So yeah... Once in a while, you are going to have to role-play the game and actually do stuff that may be uh, unpopular. And just be like, this is why it happens. I do believe that's why it happens, but uh, like I said, I don't, I'm don't. i not looking at the code, so I can't tell. But it's probably that. It has a bug that if you stay too long at 100% popularity, People will start to hate you, especially two to three years on. We really need to find a way to look at the the actual code for Power and Revolution. Oh no, uh, they're, it, they're, that, that's with everything. That's not with us. That's a bug that they have to fix. 
All right. Um, another pro tip. Uh, uh, if you want to have your fuel sector uh, to grow, you don't you don't need only oil to do so because fuel can be made uh, with colza to make biofuels, or you can use the capture carbon from the air. Which does I mean, that, once you just does that work? Like that's that's what I. It, uh... it does. It does. It actually does. If you're subsidized colza, it helps. Because people will still use biofuels. So if you want to run on a green platform and you want to increase your fuel uh, production anyway, you can also get always get cheap causa or just subsidize causa yourself. Hmm. Um, yeah, I remember as soon as they released that feature, I wanted to see if it... Uh, I wanted to see if it actually worked, but I don't. I think it took it a while before they even even fixed it. Colza is epic yeah. gamer move. Yes, it is. Absolutely, I agree. Um, there was a question earlier. Did you go over it? Uh, why do my consumer motor etc. associations keep rioting even though I do things to help them and increase funding? That's exactly what I was that that I, what I was responding to. Okay. Um, that's I kind of I kind of figured that you were so I just wanted to make sure. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Another another question from RG Strategy. PG, please remember, don't charge up hill with horsemen against spikemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I can't believe you actually do that. I can't believe you actually did that. I, Especially I, 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 I haven't played Total War before in my life, so I made the mistake of running into Pikemen. Dude. It was funny, though. Pikemen are made to run to stop cavalry. But anyway, that would be uh, another tutorial for another game. <laughs> oh no, that was that was exactly what I did. I had my cavalry go right into his. No, 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 no. It was so funny because uh, the last time me and him played, um, I forgot what happened, but for some reason I tried to get my cavalry to turn away. But as or no, 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 I literally was like saw them going in, and by the time I tried to react, it was way too late. So I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna see what happens here. So he had this pikeman just deployed, just straight, straight forward, and my cavalry slammed right into it, and the horses just flew all over the place, <laughs> and both of us just lost our crack because it was so funny just watching these horses just. <laughs> slam right into the pikes and just died instantly i was like oh god oh god why and oh I was, man and i didn't even order them to do it like um by the time i kind of looked i kind of noticed that they were doing it and i'm like wait what the heck are y'all doing and and then they just slam into his pikes and i'm like Fuck. i'm gonna get demonetized but okay Oh, explosion near the Kamastrat claimed by New Zealand. Brigades of Islam. Aw. Aw, no. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna launch some anti-terrorism on them. Even though crime's going down, that's good. Anyway. I have another pro tip here. If you want a strong currency, start exporting a lot. And you set your interest rate always at 5% plus your inflation rate, for example. If your inflation rate is at 1.5%, you must set your interest rate to 6.5. So it's 5% uh, above? That, yeah, exactly. That will give your currency a boost because more investors will be uh, targeting your... will be buying your government bonds as well as investing in... Uh, in... Uh, in, stock, in the stock market as well as in some investment opportunities in the country. I'm actually testing that out as New Zealand right now. So um, I have a uh, inflation and rate of 1.56. By the way, remember that actually increasing your your interest rate, uh, the services industry immediately, in, will immediately scream. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that. Another, another one. When making the decision to nationalize or privatize an industry, 
you must always make a televised appearance because it is better for the public to be truly informed about the reasons for the decision and that will make it pass through parliament or congress much easier yeah i usually do uh tv addresses whenever i nationalize um it's a lot better yeah um and especially with uh like some of the energy projects i've noticed that um, it's it's really difficult for you to nationalize uh, just by itself. Um, so that so I've learned myself actually the that it is really good to uh, do TV addresses whenever you nationalize. And again, for those who are watching, um, and for those who watch later on after this live stream. Uh, remember that uh, na if you do too many nationalizations, it's going to get you kicked from the WTO. So that's why you need to only nationalize the strategic sectors that you have. Uh, I, need to, I need to do a test to see how many net sectors you can nationalize uh, from the beginning of the game before the WTO uh, uh, throws you out. Um, because that's, um, because I've, I've ran into that. I nationalized, uh, so many times as the United States one time, and I got removed from the WTO for no reason. And I was like, what the heck? The WTA, the, you know why? Because you left the WTO. Oh yeah, whatever. That was, that was like Wait, eight you now. three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Twenty nine thousand. Yeah, we all we all do, we all do stupid shit on geopolitical simulator and pay the price later. <laughs> yeah, we all live and learn. I sunk an air, I, I accidentally sunk an aircraft carrier because it was too close to the shore. You you crashed the Russian economy by leaving the WTO. <laughs> I think I actually did go into a recession after that. I I'm gonna have to go through my Russia uh, yeah, series again. So to stop COVID, let me ask this real quick. Uh, to stop COVID, do I just like just sh cease all economic activity except for essential sectors, or do I do the application of strict health protocols? I believe that it's better to go all in in the beginning because this is when the uh, people not really taking it seriously and it's when it, the the virus is probably more i don't know i don't play this 2020 edition but that's more recommended action to do and boop 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 yeah let's go ahead and shut everything down my boys Seesaw will kill your economy short term. You well, yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, that's exactly. Well, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to not get people killed. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's like, do you shut down your economy? And that's the thing about, like, even with real life, like, I mean, do you shut down the economy to save thousands and thousands and thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands or millions of people, or do you? Uh, like, you know, take the hit or just, you know, just bite the bullet and then just like, you know, you're not going to shut down your economy and have everyone lose their jobs and incur... Well, you can just look at Brazil because we we barely did did shutdowns because the governors and the mayors had to do had to do actual leadership by themselves instead of waiting for the federal government to do anything. And now 200,000 people are dead. In Brazil? Yeah. Wow. Also, we ran out of oxygen. That's, um... Yeah, see, that's the thing is... And, I mean... Uh, this is why half I, a million we, we do that people are dead in the U.S. Sorry, go on. So, yeah, that is why we need to take uh, some of, the, some of the, these advices seriously, because... Well, anyway, COVID is not my specialty, but I prefer to to follow the specialists. 
Yeah. Um, anyway, guys, do you guys have any further questions? This is sounding similar to America. Uh -huh. We got nine people um, watching. So, guys, if you seriously have any more questions about Power and Revolution, if you're curious about anything, I mean, this is a and a session. We're... Uh, we're here for, I mean, as long as we need to. Um, we've been live for about 45 minutes. Yeah, Again, ask you all of your stupid questions. Yeah, all of your stupid questions are, are going to be answered now. I believe you can nationalize three to five sectors before being thrown out of the WTO, AMN says. Um, I, th I feel like I nationalized way more than three to five, but I would have to, I'm going to have to go back and really... Uh, figure out how many sectors you can nationalize before they really get pissed off at you. Anyway, uh, Jadens is making a question here. When I play countries, when I increase funding for things, the cost differs. Is it because of population? No, it's because of inflation. Yeah, it's going to be inflation. Um... Population, that's going to be maybe like 15, 20 years down the line uh, from the beginning of the game because... I mean, yeah, the population growth might affect it because uh, some funding may be tied to the number of people that you're going to give some government funds. However, uh, inflation does take, take it into account. I do remember... I think it was your gameplay politics that you were playing as Iran and you had like 15% inflation rate for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, uh, not only things were more expensive, but you started to have a, a problem on your public sector because they were like, wait, the economy is growing fast and everything is more expensive now, but our salaries are like very, very low. What do we do? And then you have to increase the public sector salaries and, uh, in order not to have a crisis. And I think... Uh, so yeah, controlling your inflation is very important. I think in the Iran series, I actually remember uh, having uh, some notifications popping up saying like, like uh, things are getting really expensive. And then I kind of caught it at that time whenever I was like, oh... This is because of inflation. Oh my god, they're like <laughs> inflation actually screws up your economy. Um so and I remember that because like they're like cuz you have your ministers and you have your people coming in. And I think even your your dad or your mom in the game like comes up to you and says like like you need to do something because like I can't go to the store without nearly running out of money just because like bread is costing oh yeah like, this amount of they, money. They will always tell you what is happening with the little people. Uh, and jo Johan, but Johan says the, hello from France, another, both another, of you. Sorry, no, it's okay. Uh, Johan, I just wanted to give a shout out to Johan. Little hello from France to both of you. Thank you for your work. Always useful. Whenever I ran a game after, uh, whenever I ran a game after a few weeks, um, yeah, th uh, definitely. Thank you for that. Uh, me and Gabe worked really hard on that economic tutorial, um, so it it, it was a lot of fun making. Honestly, I so should get an M MBA after this tutorial, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention, uh, during the, the guide, I was talking about how some of your taxation policies can also be used to, uh, the preparation. Uh, to guide some economic policies and to curb some bad behaviors. Uh, now, this is related to a field of economics that I'm actually really into, which is behavioral economics. Because... Uh, which is basically treating economics in a more psychological way, uh, studying the ways that people react to stuff instead of just uh, looking at numbers. I mean, you will look at the, at the numbers, but uh, seeing how people interact with the economy rather than going, oh, but if X is Y, then Z, you know, and... The, uh, there's this very, very good uh, lecture by by Toller on the Chicago University lecture. And by the way, Toller is pretty much the father of the behavior of modern behavioral economics, and you should definitely check out his books. 
Did you? Uh, <clears throat> let me check real quick. Uh, Tyler, book. Uh, one is on, one of them is misbehaving. Uh, the making of behavioral economics, and the one. Uh, the other one is nudge. And another one that is really good is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. And I'm going to put on a on the chat the link to the Toller, Richard Toller lecture at the Chicago University. So you guys can check it out later. There's a really good question, really actually. Knowledge. Um, this is from uh, one of my members, Clune. Clu Clu yeah, I'm going to call you Clune, unless clown. I'm saying clown? It, it, it's supposed to be clown -y. Okay. Um, is there a way to gauge what level my minimum wage allowance and retirement pension should be? It's going to be your cost of living. The reason, um, well, Amen actually replied right as I did. Uh, so minimum solidarity allowance should be half of the minimum wage, and housing allowance should be as high as you want it to be because it's so cheap. A pension wage should be around half of the minimum wage. So there's that one. Um, there's that. So thank you, AMN, for answering that. But um, one of the best ways to kind of gauge about what you think that your, um, your minimum wage, your minimum solidarity allowance. Uh, so I'll go, I guess I'll go through them individual real quick. Uh, minimum wage is basically going to be your cost of living. Uh, the way to find out what your cost of living is inside of your country um, that is going to be, I believe, let's go over to the population tab. And the population tab is going to be um, your GDP per capita. Your GDP per capita is basically the average amount of money that each of your uh, citizens makes. And that's like, you know, 43,000. by the way. Yeah, a year. It's, it's based on a year. Not monthly, it's yearly. Um, so right now, even like with COVID happening, uh, but at the beginning of 2019, it was $43,939. Right now it's 35,000 because I shut down the economy and we're going through COVID right now. So that's why it's dropping. Um, but that's going to be one of the best ways to find out your cost of living. And I believe your cost of living, um, I can't really think about what your what exactly gabe can you kind of like um do, do you really know how yeah to I, I, I wanted to i wanted to chime in all right so there's two things that you should probably do uh the first one like pg said you if you want to set a good uh monthly monthly minimum wage you're gonna have to take a look at your gdp per capita and probably uh divided by 12 and then you're gonna have you see the monthly uh, GDP, GDP per capita. But that usually isn't a good assessment of the of the cost of living. Now, you can go the complicated way and try to create uh, and create yourself a small calculation for it by getting like cereal, beef, and other essentials, put them on, uh, on Excel, and then you go and you check, uh, make a meeting of all of the prices, um, multiply it by the month, and then you get a probable, a probable uh, uh, living cost of that country. But you want to know a simpler solution? You have to understand that the game is based on real life. So just go to any economics website about the cost of living and just look it up. Yeah, um, and that's another reason probably why we always see these yearly updates is because the um, the information that is implemented into these games is changed every year. I mean, I mean, we go through. I mean, we we're not the same that we were at the beginning of 2020 as we are in 2021. Yeah. So just like that, the game is updated every single year, you know, to 2019, 2020. We're probably going to get a 2021 edition, but I haven't heard anything from Power and Revolution yet. Um, and if I do, I will definitely let you guys know. So uh, keep an eye on my channel for that news. Um, but there's, yeah, and about, uh, there's a about very the, intricated, there's a the very intricated wage, way. I don't refer to my, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. 
Um, is there a delay? Yeah. Like, is there a delay with you, or because I, I don't know if we're like not hearing each other as soon as yeah. we're talking. I believe that there is uh, like uh, one second delay because I start talking. I go, oh, uh, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, and the video has five second delay. Hopes for a fifth version. Yeah, um, I'm definitely going to be down for Power Revolution Five. Oh man, that you know is what I really boring. want? Sorry, what? I want a power. Uh, what, what I really want is a Power Revolution based around the Cold War. Ha, starting yeah. 19, starting nineteen fifties and go all the way to two thousand because all the data data is there, and the technology it would be really fun to have the technology tree would be like like front and center for that. Yeah. Yeah, that mask looks horrible. <laughs> I know. I saw that too. I was like, oh. Just paste a three D model of a mask on the face. Back. Tourism rescheduled for eight twenty three twenty twenty. Apparently, yeah, using but, the uh, as an election what I here. was going to what I was going to refer before is the um, I did say it in a previous answer about how I calculate how I increase my minimum wage and clowny. Like I like I said very early in the video, I I always increase the minimum wage. In the beginning of the year, based on the calculation of the growth and the inflation of the last year, so that way every year the minimum wage will increase, and that, that will help to mitigate the purchasing power problem. The decree takes. A but yeah, people have any more questions? Uh, questions are coming in slowly, but. I just increase my minimum wage when I feel like it. Yeah, that's another thing. It's kind of like, uh, um, depending on what kind of social, whatever the social meeting, uh, mood is, I guess, at the time, that's whenever I usually go for some of those, um, some of those yeah. kind of promises. Or usually, especially if I do it uh, during an election period and I promise to, to uh, increase the minimum wage, that's definitely whenever I do it because I always like to keep my promises after the election campaign. Um, the health officials. Ah, uh, they're saying that my freaking lockdown is is overly overdoing it, and I'm like, come on, I'm just trying to save some lives. <laughs> but yeah, um, by the way, there's another thing about minimum wage that I found out on my well, when I was playing on, on U as UK recently. If you increase your minimum wage too much. It's actually going to uh, have a problem for the industry because uh, it's going to lower the pro the profitability of the sector, and your growth is going to be uh, a bit harder to increase. But, however, for some countries, that will actually increase the consumption rate, and will increase to a higher growth. But yeah, companies will not enjoy having to pay uh, a minimum wage that is too high. So I also decreased the company packs. That's a really good way to... Um, yeah, and that's the other thing about... Uh, so company turnover... Uh, the tax on redundancies and especially the company, uh, the corporate tax, uh, basically one of the biggest things about uh, those kinds of th those kinds of taxes. Um, if you if you do something like, I guess, hiking the interest rate or um, something like that, one of the best ways that you can kind of like. Because if you just do the action alone and your economy kind of starts going sideways, uh, one of the best ways that you, one of the best things that you can probably do is that whenever you lower the interest or raise the interest rate to kind of like uh, increase the uh, value of your currency, one of the other things that you can do is that um, to cancel out the growth that you're losing by increasing your minimum wage, what you can do is that you can actually lower the uh, maybe the company turnover tax or even the uh, the corporate tax 
uh, to make sure that, you know, that growth isn't exactly going nowhere. So, um, you know, because increasing the, uh, the interest rate does hurt your services sector. So if you lower the taxes that they are being taxed by, or even go in and then individually start handing them out subsidies, uh, or exonerations, then that is going to possibly cancel out uh, the amount of growth that you're sort of losing from increasing the minimum wage, or not, or the, not the minimum wage, the uh, the interest rate. Uh, question is, what do tax on redundancies do? Basically, the tax on redundancies. I can actually go ahead and pull it up here. Uh, the tax on redundancies is basically a tax. Let me go ahead and find it real quick. Um, Tax on redundancies, it's paid to the state by a company that is laying off. This ca tax is calculated according to the level of pay of the relevant individuals. Uh, in principle, it is aimed at funding the public employment service. So essentially, tax on redundancies is a way for a, a way for the government to kind of step in if you're uh, so if like a like, so I've actually had this problem as the United States, and I'll actually uh, this is going to take me a second to kind of get through because it was a it was a long story that I kind of noticed. But anyway, um, the thing about redundancies is basically it's the government stepping into the situation and saying if you're gonna lay people off, and so this is only uh, if your um, unemployment rate is going up. So one of the best ways to kind of do that is to introduce a redundancy tax. So if they are laying people off, it kind of is one of those kind of safety net measures to where the government steps in and says, if you lay off your uh, lay off your workers, then you're going to be taxed for that. And so the uh, the percentage that you're entering into uh, the redundancy tax is the it's as it says the sum is as a percentage of the annual salary of the relevant individual. So, if a person is making a hundred thousand uh, dollars from a company and that person making a hundred thousand dollars is laid off by that company, then the then that company will pay twelve point nine percent, as we can see here on this window, uh, to the government because they laid that person off. Uh, so yeah, lay off your workers. There's a tax for that. There's a tax for everything, my boy. <laughs> All right, uh, Johan Munier has a question. Uh, sorry if it has already been asked. What do you guys think about deflation? I try my best to keep inflation at minus 1%. Well, uh, deflation is not good for your economy. Uh, because that means that prices are decreasing. If the prices are decreasing, uh, this will have a problem for your growth. L like, I understand what you, what you think, that, oh, yeah, people will have cheaper stuff, but, well, yes, but people will also uh, stop buying stuff because, well, I could just stop buying stuff because I know there will be 1% more cheaper or 3% more cheaper next week. And then you have a vicious cycle that will end up in a recession. So yeah, if you want your economy to grow in a healthy way, you need to keep your inflation between 1% to 2%. Uh, should probably keep doing stuff about COVID. Well, we only have uh, about three... Uh, three people that are um, infected and in, inside of the entire country. So I think I'm almost pretty much good. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the economy here. Uh, do, 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 do. Still no new questions. Um, okay, positive but low. Yeah. And by the way, guys, uh, let me pl do a small plug in here. Uh, guys, um, in about one hour, uh, it will be eight o'clock here, but it, it's Did you probably have eleven o'clock on green, green Meridian time. I don't know what the time zone you guys are, but in exactly not one hour because it, it's ten minutes to to seven here. But yeah, you want ah, fuck. In one hour, uh, it will be the, the the start of my India series with the first episode, 
and I spent some time editing it and I have a new editing software so it looks really really good you guys are going to really enjoy it yeah I'm definitely going to be there so I'll make sure to I think I already put a notification bell on uh, so if you guys are watching right now please go ahead and subscribe to Gabe Vogel uh, he did a lot of work on this economic tutorial and he helped me out um, very much and I absolutely appreciate everything that he did for this economic tutorial and it would have not been here if it wasn't for Gabe so definitely go give him a subscription uh, if you have not subscribed to him he is about to hit 500 subscribers so let's help him get to 500 subscribers by the end of today I want to try to hit that uh, for Gabe um, try to see what we can do yeah, I, I, might, I might even do a Millennium Bomb series if I get enough subscribers. Uh, there's a question right here from Wright. Uh, what does the banking service and the service tab do, and can it affect your economy? I'll be honest with you, I don't know. It was just left there by Everson. I did, really didn't do anything with it. Yeah, um, the, the, the banking sector, I guess it's, I guess it's one of those things um, where, I mean, because of the service sector, I guess it's a way for you again if you're uh if you're playing a certain way and you want to i guess enact socialism or communism or something like that um and that's not really not really that not saying that like nationalizing it is that but it's more so because of maybe the financial crisis that happened uh about 10 years ago 12 years ago uh, back in 2008 2009 um, and the reason that that started was because of the banking sector. The banking sector and the mortgage sector, the housing sector, um, they didn't, they were doing some pre they, pretty they weird things. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, yeah, it was worse than Enron. It, we'll, we'll say that. So the banking sector, I guess it's in there as a way for you to kind of like, if you want to subsidize it and help it grow, um, I mean, I mean, we're making one hundred and thirty three million dollars off of uh, the banking sector. And apparently I'm taxing it by five percent. That's a it's kind of interesting. And seventy thousand people work in, t in the banking sector. So you can subsidize it, allow people to get more jobs within the banking sector. If you want to nationalize it to make sure that your banking sector isn't doing some suspicious things under the table, um, you can nationalize it partially or fully. Um, bank sectors used to be changeable back in the day. Um, just think they have forgotten to remove it from the list. Uh, so yeah, uh, the banking sector, I mean, it's kind of useless. Um, but it's it's just there. I mean, my favorite sector to mess with is the fast food sector. Hell yeah. Apparently, New Zealand makes $2 billion in sales from fast food. Wow. <laughs> Banking sector says. <laughs> I just got cyber attacked. Excuse me. Well, that sucks. Who the hell cyber? And this is why I always, always, we uh, yeah. This is a hint. Always invest in your cyber security infrastructure. Yep. Uh, I apparently I didn't make the mistake. I made the mistake of not investing in that. So not only am I going through a COVID recession, I'm going through a cyber attack recession. Yeah, power revolution needs you to be always. Uh, aware of what you're doing like i said before uh this game does not hand hold you apparently taiwan is the one that orchestrated it. the attack that's dang it taiwan what did i do to you yeah when it's like an organization it's usually uh cyber criminals not exactly a nation that is funny yeah, really, because uh, some cyber uh, if you check the global threat, it will actually tell you about cyber crime. Yeah, I actually remember that. And I like, um, and it is less. And the more you fund your uh, the safety for uh, if your of your cyber infrastructure, as well as in the police tab, the uh, your cyber police, quote unquote. 
uh, the less likely you're going to have a massive cyber attack. Yeah, um, there's another question. Uh, if you have a very good fiber optics and 4G connection, how does that affect the country and economy? Um, <laughs> me and Gabe found oh, this one. Oh, that out. is a funny story. That is a very funny story. That is a great story. Uh, you can go ahead and tell it. Remember the Russia gameplay? I do remember the Russia yeah. gameplay. He, uh, he managed to get 100 percent of everything internet in Russia. His service sector exploded, and by exploded, I don't mean it grew. I mean it fell down, and that's for two reasons. The first one is that people started to buy their stuff online. The second one is because uh, the services, the internet services, and the others started to use so much services that they had to start to import them. Yeah. Uh, so in the end, the thing about had negative. The thing about my services sector. The thing about my services sector. Whenever, um, whenever I found this out, uh, basically what had happened is it was because of the internet, and we found out that it was the internet because that was the only thing that I was majorly investing in. So whenever I was, uh, whenever I was uh, kind of like looking through it, I noticed how my electricity production was or my electricity consumption was out of control. So whenever I came over here to my GDP deficit uh, or my trade balance deficit, my deficit, my trade balance deficit was like negative $1 trillion. And it was, it was a pr positive, what was it? Like 200, 300, $400 billion before I invested everything into internet. So whenever I kind of went through the sectors individually, I noticed that um, I noticed that my uh, services sector was negative like one point one trillion dollars. And I'm like, why the hell is it that bad right now? So I kind of <laughs> I kind of just dumbed it down and kind of went, oh okay. So it's because of my freaking uh, uh my my cyber my cyber security investment my uh 4g internet investment um fiber optics especially is definitely between fiber optics and 4g internet uh, those are the biggest ones that have the biggest influence on that so if you're investing into more internet infrastructure make sure that your uh your uh energy production can keep up with that and especially if you're a larger country uh, you know, with several million people, it's probably not going to be that much of an issue because it's really hard for populations like that to have exploding uh, energy uh, demands. But whenever you have hundreds of millions of people or tens of millions of people, uh, that's whenever you run into the issue of how much uh, demand you're having because so many more people are having that available to them uh, just on the spot. Yeah, uh, so when you start investing in, in your internet services, you're going to have to do it slowly in order for the services industry to pick up. You know what? Uh, it's been an hour and 10 minutes of live stream. Mm hmm. And yeah, wow, uh, yeah, you guys have any other questions because I'm really hungry right now, <laughs> yeah, I'm and I still have to answer the my live stream, my live stream, my new India series in one hour, yeah, and the uh, COVID pandemic's starting to get a little bad, and my popularity's starting to suffer, so I probably want to jump ship before I start screwing up too much in this game. Um, I haven't played COVID in a while, so I'm gonna have to start playing some COVID games. Try to try to get a little better. PG, there's a reason you keep losing popularity because of something. Um, but I'm gonna just spam 3G nuclear power plants, LMAO. Yeah, um, if you have the money for it, definitely do spam 3G nuclear power plants. Maybe five, ten, ten at a time, um, and it pays off. It pays off in the end. It really does. 
Uh, but guys, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, we could go ahead and wrap this uh, live stream up here. Uh, so guys, if you guys uh, like this video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, if you want to see any more content like the economic tutorial, supporting me and Gabe with uh, uh, donations and uh, subscriptions and... Oh, I uh, don't have just, donations yet. Yeah, he doesn't have donations yet, but um, get, a yeah, pay, get a pay. I account. don't have a thousand subscribers yet. Yeah, I'll, I, I, yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, just go, go support Gabe in any way you can if you want to... Uh, uh, support me in a more personal way super chatting and uh, everything like that is much much appreciated i uh, give thanks to uh, albert and amn for donating earlier in the live stream or actually not in the live stream in the uh, economic tutorial itself so uh definitely thank you for that wait uh someone is trying to say something got one more question and i'll go ahead and head out uh the less <laughs> to just provide the solidarity Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you're talking. You're telling me to do that in here. Okay. I mean, I gave you right, like head out dollars. All right. I will see. I will see you later, Gabe. Is, um, yeah. See y'all. All right. See you, Gabe. And I will go ahead and wrap this up here. See you guys in one hour. And yeah, everyone, make sure to go see uh, Gabe's India India video. Um, hi guys. How do you control population growth? Uh, population growth. That's basically um, it's all going to be through your family tab. So most likely that's going to be from your family allowances. The way to kind of directly do that, but also population growth. It's um, don't build too many maternity hospitals. Yeah, that's another way you can do that. Um, but uh but but i'll go ahead and wrap it up here so uh guys thank you guys so much for watching this thank you all for uh joining me today for the economic guide release um i know that video took way too long to make and the reason that it took so long to make is mainly because uh i i've just had a hard year um it's just not been my year uh, personally for me I can't really go into it because it's just it's just personal um, so it's it's just been a lot so that's the reason why it took me so long is because I didn't have the drive or the motivation to really uh, make the economic guide and it was just kind of it kind of got to a point where I was just like okay I need to get this 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 and this done so um, so that's why I work so hard this week just to get the economic guide uh, out to y'all. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot for a couple more live streams uh, this week. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna go ahead and start continuing on with the United States series. Uh, so definitely look to look forward to that. I am going to be getting a brand new logo for this channel. So definitely look out for that. Uh, and guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys all for joining me today. Uh, thank you all for joining me for the economic guide release. Uh, if you have not seen the economic guide, go and watch it. It's really funny to watch. Um, we, there's a lot of information in there. If you don't know anything about Power and Revolution, uh, that is a good tutorial to watch if you don't know anything about the game. So again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, thank you all for watching and take care.